This is the eighth SolidWorks CAD tutorial for the pen project. And I know at the end of the seventh one, I told you your next one was going to be a doozy, but I lied. Uh, the reality is we got one more relatively easy one to do. I mean, if you look at its profile, it's got a rounded ballpoint, right? And then it's got a quick taper and then a bunch of uh, horizontal and vertical steps. So this one's going to be relatively quick. The only difficulty with this one is, first off, don't be fooled. It's not super short. This is what's called a broken view, all right? And that's so that we can fit it on the paper. You may have seen this before when we did some of the tubes, okay? So while it doesn't look proportional for this to be 3.445 uh, inches long compared to, like, the back, which is only 661 thou, okay, I assure you all the dimensions are correct. Things to watch out for, we have these smaller dimensions here for these uh, initial radii. All right, you'll notice that I have them stepped out. All right, so pay close attention to those, um, those leader lines. And then the overall radius, the maximum radius on this, I have off on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and get this started and knock this one out. So I'm going to go and I'm going to start a new part. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my document options. And I'm going to set my dimensions to three decimal places. All right. Um, so now I'll click OK there. That way, as I'm typing in dimensions, it won't shorten them up on me. So I'll start in the front plane. And I'll give myself a center line. And I'll move it off to the left. Make sure it snaps to horizontal. Okay, and then I'll hit escape. And for this one, I'm going to start with a circle. And I'm doing circle by center. So there's a couple different ways to do circles. I'm using the first one, circle by center. All right, now I don't want to snap to the midpoint of this, but anywhere else close to the origin is just fine. All right, I do want to snap to the line, just not to the midpoint of the line. So I'm going to click. And then I'm going to move my mouse to the right, and I'm going to snap the outside of the circle to the origin. With that done, I'm going to go to my trim tool. I'm going to trim this up. And then um, I'm going to smart dimension it. And usually I know I start off with the profiles, and then I go into dimensioning. But for this one, it just helps if I start this one off with the dimension. All right, so the radius for this is 0 0.019 or 19 thousandths for the radius. All right, now. If I had left that as a circle, it would have asked me to dimension that by diameter. So by trimming it first, it ensures that I'm dimensioning an arc, and arcs are always dimensioned by radii. All right. So let's move on from there. Let's go to our line tool, and I'm going to stop. I'm going to start at top dead center. All right, of this arc, and I'm going to come off at an angle. Then I'm going to come over horizontal, up, over horizontal, up over horizontal, up, and over horizontal, and then back down. So I'll hit escape, All right? So I have the narrowest part of the, of the tip. I've got the long skinny section, then I've got the threaded portion, and then I've got the boss, um, which is where you would grab it with your fingers. So now let's start giving this some dimensions. Um, actually, I lied, let's trim this. So go trim, get rid of that. Now let's add our dimensions. So I'm going to start with the overall length, and you're going to see the proportions on this kind of make a little bit more sense when I do. So I'm going to go from the very back of it to the origin, and I'm going to drop my length down the bottom um, just so it's kind of out of the way. So in this case, it's 116 millimeters or 4.567 inches. Um, notice that if I type in 116 and then I put mm, while I'm working in inches, pounds, and seconds, it will convert that for me. So when I hit the green check, all right, and then we zoom to fit, you'll notice I now have a dimension of 0. 0.467 inches, just like it showed on the drawing. So if you know the metric dimensions, um, sometimes you can use those uh, even when you're in an imperial environment uh, or working in inches. All right, and it will, SolidWorks is smart enough to do the conversion for you. So now I'm going to zoom in on this back section, and I'm going to work my way from the back forward. So I'm going to grab this segment here, which is the grip, and I'm going to set this to 661 um, thousandths of an inch. Notice I didn't put a units there, so it's assuming inches. 
All right, if you put it, if you put units in, it will convert it to the document units. But if you don't put any units in, then it assumes it's document units. All right, so for this one, it's 125 thou or an eighth of an inch. All right. Then I go to my next one. This is the really, really long one. And this one's going to be 3.445 inches. All right, and then I'm going to zoom to fit so that I can scroll in and zoom in over here. It's the fastest way to navigate around. And again, I'm making sure I'm grabbing the segments and not the midpoints of the segments. All right, so this one is going to be a 270 thou or 0.270. And now I have all the length dimensions I need because the overall length is put in here and this has a radius attached to it. So I don't need a length dimension to go from here to here. All right. If I tried to put one in, it would probably just yell at me and say, do you want to make a driven dimension? So at this point, I'm just going to negate that altogether. And now I'm going to start putting in some of the radial dimensions. All right. So working from the narrowest back out to the largest. So I'm going to go from my center line to here, and that's going to be 37 thou, 0 0.037 inches. And I'm going to go to my next segment, do the center line. And this one's going to be 59 thou, 0 0.059. All right, so zoom out, and I'll go to my next segment. All right, so you'll notice like things went a little wonky on me. Okay, oh, hang on, Let me escape on that. I'm going to get out of my dimension tool from in here. So if I hit escape a couple times on my keyboard, eventually I get back to my selection tool. So I'm going to grab this because I know that has to be bigger and I know this has to be bigger. So I'm just kind of moving things around, getting them kind of close to where they need to be. So now I'll go back to my smart dimension tool, go from here to here, and I'll set this one to a diameter or a radius, excuse me, of 88 thou, 0 0.088. And then the last one from here to here, I'm going to set this one to a radius of 98,000.098 inches. Okay. So this looks like a giant mess, but I assure you it's done. All right. And if I want to, I can go to view, hide show, and I can turn off my sketch dimensions. Okay. So by hiding my sketch dimensions, I can kind of get a better idea without them in the way. So now I'm going to hit exit sketch. And I'm going to go to my features and I'm going to revolve it again. I never closed it, but I know it's going to do that for me. So no biggie green check, click off to hide the sketch. So now what I want to do is I want to change um, some of the shading on this, right? So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go to my appearances and I'm going to start by shading the whole part. And I'm going to make the whole part black. And then I'm going to green check. Then I'm going to grab this face here and I'm going to go to my appearance and I just want to shade this face. So I'm going to select just that face and I'm going to change this one to Chrome. And I'll choose Chrome plating. But while I'm here, I'll go into my selected geometry and I'll zoom in and I'll grab the rest of this. So from there, 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 and there. All right. So now I can green check it. And this was the last of the easy ones, I promise you. It was just a simple revolve. The next one, we're going to go deep. I, prom I, I know I've been promising it before, but I'm not lying this time. For realsies, here we go. Save it and move on to the next one.